And we're calling it Red Letters. And that's because these are Jesus's words to us. Jesus, when he came down, Matthew talks about how in the person of Jesus, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of God is with us in the person of Jesus. So a lot of times we think that heaven is something in the future. But what Matthew talks about is that the kingdom of God was here in the person of Jesus. And so we, we see this in the Sermon on the Mount. This is Jesus' longest recorded message to you and to I. And it goes from Matthew chapter 5 all the way through Matthew chapter 7. And we're just kind of going verse by verse as we look at it. And today we're in Matthew 6, starting in verse 9. Um, Jesus' point up to this point, again, was about the kingdom of heaven. But he came to bring good news, he said. He came to bring us good news. And he starts with this good news with what we call the Beatitudes. And this was him declaring blessing upon us, contrary to whatever's happening in our own lives, contrary to what's going on in the world. He was declaring blessing in our lives. And then he said that me and you, as we're followers of Jesus, we are meant to be salt and light in the world. Did you know that you were meant to change the world? You were meant to change the world. A lot of times we think, oh man, just the most religious person I know, they're meant to change the world or, or just the most, you know, Jesus is meant to change the world. Billy Graham is meant to change. No, you and I were meant to change the world, Jesus says. And then he talks about how we should live. And last week we looked at how he talks about how we should pray and give to the needy. And the idea basically that he's saying in the first part of Luke chapter six, or Matthew chapter six is that we shouldn't do these things. We shouldn't pray and we shouldn't give to other people and do things good for other people to call attention to ourselves. That's not what it's about. It's not about me making me look better. It's about bringing glory to God. And so we got all the way through and we're now at Matthew chapter six, verse nine. And this part of, of the, the Bible, this part of Jesus message is called and you might even see it in your Bibles called the Lord's prayer. And, and you've probably heard this prayer before. You've probably even said this prayer before because it's really, really popular in the church. And Jesus is teaching us how to pray. A while ago, I, I heard a story of these two ladies and these two ladies, they met at work and their first day, they happened to get hired and they started their job at the very first day. And immediately these two ladies knew that they were going to be best friends. Have you ever done that, started a job like that? And immediately like the people that you start the job with, like you in, in, immediately have this like instant connection with of like going through the same experience. You had to go through the whole hiring process together. You had to go through all the paperwork together and all the training together and all that stuff. And so you just kind of build this bond. And this is what this these ladies did. And so they, they had this and instantly they knew they were going to be best friends. But how many of you guys know that as an adult, it's kind of hard to have like a childhood best friend. Like it's kind of hard to do that. You know why? Because we're busy. We got kids and we got responsibility and jobs and all these things that we have to make sure that we take care of. And so this lady knew this and she knew that with her best friend, her new best friend at work, her work BFF, this lady that she was trying to get a, this connection with, she's like, how do we have this experience to where like we're in high school together? We're like, we're like really, 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 really close because they don't know their stories. They don't know about the old boyfriends or the things that happened in high school or the college football games that they went to. They, they don't really know these things about each other. And, and so this lady was like, how do I like get her my story, but I don't have the time to do it. And so what she started doing is she got an old tape recorder. Now, a tape recorder, back in the day, kids, there was this thing called a tape, and this tape had a little, like, magnet thing. You, you guys, have you guys ever seen a tape? Okay. All right, so I don't have to explain it to you too much. So she got an old school tape recorder. And as she got home at night, she dedicated just 30 minutes every night to tell an old story of her life to the tape recorder. And then she would bring her friend these tapes. And so her friend that she just made found out about the old college boyfriend. She found out about the time that she came to school in two different shoes. She found out about the time where all these things happened in her life. And, and she, she found out about these things. And then the, that friend got a tape recorder and she started giving her tapes. And so they shared their stories. And then all of a sudden they had this history together that they didn't have before. They knew each other in ways that they wouldn't have learned just just saying hi as they pass each other on the way back and forth to the water cooler at work. And so this is what they did. They actually talked to each other so that they would have 
a deeper relationship. Now, for some of you guys, this may sound like super self-centered, like, dude, I would never like record myself talking about myself into a recorder and then hand that to another human being. I just wouldn't do that. But the idea is, is that she wanted her new friend to understand all of her references, all of her inside jokes. She wanted to, her to understand her life. The communication that they had deepened the relationship and it brought them closer together. As they talked to one another through these tapes, it deepened their relationship and it brought them closer together. Last week, we talked about not making ourselves the center of the story with other people, but you need to know this, that God wants to talk to you. God wants to talk to you. God wants to have a relationship with you. God wants to hear your stories. He wants to hear your struggles. He wants to hear where you doubt. He wants to hear where you're struggling. He wants to hear these things because he wants a deeper relationship with you. Just like this lady and her friend, he wants a deeper relationship with you. And communication, as we know this, will define the depths of our relationships. Communication will define the depths of our relationships. Your friends are your friends. Why? Because you talk to them. Some of you guys are like, man, I'm introverted. I don't want to ever talk to anybody. But no, your friends who you have that are your friends are your friends because you talk to them. They know a lot about you. Your acquaintances or the people who are far from you. You talk to them less and you've not opened up to them as much. And because of that, your relationship quality with them is not as high. Communication defines the depth of our relationship and good communication comes in in both quality and quantity, quality and quantity. If my wife and I had one really, really good talk, wives, think about this. We had one really, really good talk, boyfriends, girlfriends, think about this, one time a year. <laughs> that was it. And at that, my, I would tell my wife, listen, Liz, I'm gonna let you pick the date. Anytime this calendar year, I, you and I will have one good talk and that is your good talk for this year. How good do you think our relationship would be? It wouldn't be good at all. It wouldn't be good because we don't have the quantity of talks that we need. We, if we talked every day, if me and my wife, we talked every day, but we only talked about logistics, about going to, who's going to pick up the kids, who's going to get dinner, who's going to make sure that, uh, that who's going to take the dog to the vet, who's going to do these things. Our relationship would equally be, be terrible because the quality of our talks are not as good either. So do you see what I'm saying? There's quality and there's quantity. And both of those things are equally important. I remember my mom telling me years ago, the key to having good relationships with teenage kids as a parent is you got to be ready to listen when they're ready to talk. A lot of times what happens, especially dads in the room, we, 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 we want them to listen to us when it's on our time schedule. Like, listen, sweetie, uh, you know, when I get home from work from 7.30 to, to 8 o'clock, that's the time that you can talk to me because 8 o'clock the game's starting and it, before 7.30 I'm still thinking about work. So you, you need to talk to me during that time and I'll be ready to listen during that time. Men, is that true? We do that. We do that. And so the key is being ready to listen whenever they are ready to talk. But the truth is that they're ready to talk when they are ready. So you better be ready to listen. The depth of your, your relationship is determined by the quality and the quantity of your communication. If communication defines the depth of our relationship, then our communication with God will find, define the depth of our relationship with him. And we call this communication with God prayer. That's what we called it. That's, that's the name for it. When we talk to God. And some of us, we were, we were raised in traditions where prayer was very, very formal. It was very, very formal. And like you, you had to say, like all of a sudden you started talking in King James, like thee, thou, thus, thou, doest, thus, you know, like you started talking like that because that's how you, you were taught to pray. Some of us, prayer was very informal. I know some people that like literally start talking to daddy God. That's what they call him, daddy God. And we're going to get to that in a little bit where that comes from. But some of us have formal, some of us have informal, but any communication that we have with God is called prayer. We all can improve in the quality 
and the quantity of our prayers. I don't care if you've barely been a Christian for six months or you've been a Christian for 60 years. You can improve in the quality in the quantity of our prayers. Some of us have a weak prayer life because our prayers lack quality. There's an old movie where an old comedian, his name's Tim Allen, he said this, he, 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 uh, he was around a dinner table and they asked him to pray and he wasn't one of these guys, like his character in the movie wasn't these guys that you would ask to pray for a meal. Some of you guys, you're around the family dinner table and they ask you to pray, you're like, mm, no, no, somebody else, somebody else needs to be doing this, right? Do, do I know anybody like that in here? Somebody else needs to be praying for the meal. I don't want to do this. And this was his character. I don't want to be praying for the meal. Don't ask me to do this. And they found, they're like, no, no, you have to do this. You need to be the guy to do this. And he This was his prayer that he said, good food, good meat, good God, let's eat. Amen. That was his prayer. It wasn't a quality prayer at all. And some of us, some of us, our prayers just lack quality. Like we're not actually, we're not talking to God the way that God wants to be talked to. But thankfully, Jesus tells us how we can talk to God. And we're going to get there in just a second. Some of us have a weak prayer life because our prayers lack quantity. Before Jesus was arrested and crucified, he took his closest disciples to the garden with him and he asked them to pray with him and that they and he went a little further down the path he talks about. And this is right before he was arrested and tried and crucified all the stuff that Dwight talked about a couple minutes ago. When he came back, guess what his disciples were doing? They were all sleeping. They were sleeping. And Jesus said to them, can't you just watch with me one hour? Can't you just pray, watch and pray that you that you may not enter into temptation for the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Watch there means to carefully uh, to be careful that destructive calamity doesn't suddenly overtake you due to forgetfulness or laziness. How many times, how many things have we given up on simply by stopping our prayers through forgetfulness or laziness before the process of of what we're actually praying for was complete. Some of our prayers lack quantity. So Jesus is saying, like, we, we, we've got to pray good prayer. He wants to talk to us. He wants to have this relationship with us. He wants to communicate with you and I. So what qualifies us to pray? Some of you might, might think, man, God doesn't want to hear from me. God didn't want to hear. I mean, I messed up three times this week. I say the wrong words and I, I, I chewed out my kids and I do all this stuff. What qualifies for us to pray? Is it knowing the right things to pray? Is it being able to say the right things? Some people you hear pray and you're like, man, when they pray, I know God hears them. But I can't pray like that. And so God must not hear. Like, that's what goes on in people's minds. Have you ever thought like that? I've thought like that. I thought that there, there's other people. So what qualifies us to pray? You have... The same qualifications, you, each and every one of you, have the same qualifications for an incredible prayer life that the most religious person that you know has. And what is that? How do we know this? Because in Romans 3.23, it tells us that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Sin separates from God. So we're all sinners. We all have done things that that would cause God not to want to listen to us. But that doesn't stop God from listening to us. It's not like God goes around and hands out access cards people and not to other people. No, we we all have access to the throne because we have access to the throne through Jesus Christ. In Hebrews chapter four, verse 15 and 16, four, we do not have a high priest. This is Jesus who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect was tempted just as we were yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace in our time of need where do, uh, that we uh, we're qualified through our relationship with Jesus Christ where does this confidence that Paul uh, that the writer of Hebrews uh, where where does this confidence come from that tells us that we can draw near to the throne our confidence comes from who we are in Christ If you believe that Jesus died for your sins, if you believe that Jesus rose from the grave, if you believe that the Holy Spirit is alive inside of you, you are qualified to talk to God. You don't need me to talk to God for you. You don't need a mom, a dad, a cousin, an aunt. You don't need the 
this religious person you know to talk to God for you, you can go talk to God on your own because our confidence comes from our identity in him. Second Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone and behold, the new is come. What is our new identity? John 1, 12 through 13. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave rights to be called children of God who were born not of blood or uh, uh, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. You are now a child of God. And just like a good father wants to hear from his children, just like a good father wants to pour into his children, just like a good father wants to communicate with them all the time and talk to them all the time, your father in heaven wants to talk to you. When Lily was at school, I would get on her nerves. I know, you know why? Because every, every day when I get, home, get off work at five o'clock, I'd be calling her every day. You know why? Half the time it's because Liz didn't answer her phone. So I was going to call somebody. So I called Lily and I would talk to her all the way home. You can ask her. I would do it every day, every day, because a father wants to talk to his children. A few uh, a few years ago, this is before we got a, a ring camera. I had some teenagers um, that came and they call it ding dong ditch where you like ring the doorbell and you run away. You guys have never done that, right? You guys have never done that. Anyway, so they, they did that to our house at one o'clock in the morning. And my wife, I mean, if the full like weight of the law of Queen Creek, Arizona could come down on a child, my wife wanted that to come down on those children that night, you know, who, who did that to our house. They rang the doorbell at 1 a.m. and ran off and Liz was just angry. Like she was just like, I am ready to just call the cops and see. And I'm like, Liz, th th this is not a thing. They won't even come out for this. This is not going to happen. This was one time, yet for years, it still, it still happens. My six-year-old, two or three o'clock in the morning, will come to Liz's side of the bed in the middle of the night, she's dead asleep, and announce to my wife, mom, I've got to go to the bathroom. Wakes her up, mom, I've got to go to the bathroom. And Liz is like, oh yes, yeah, sweetie, go ahead, just go to the bathroom. Like, she didn't have to wake her up. She didn't have to tell her that. Just go to the bathroom. Why are, you, why are you having to tell us that? You know, why are you waking us up to tell us that? Just go, like, don't do that to us. But my wife has like literally the patience of God in her body to say, yes, yeah, sweetie, whatever you need, just go, just you go do that right now. What's the difference? Relationship. Those kids, my wife does not know. Those kids are not my wife's children. Those kids are not my wife, but my wife's own baby. She's willing to let them wake her up in the middle of the night to announce all they have to do is go to the bathroom, which she's perfectly capable of doing on her own. That's the difference. And so the difference when we're talking about how we talk to God is relationship. A pastor in New York, his name's Tim Keller. He said this, the only person who dares to wake up a king at 3 a.m. for a glass of water is his child. The only person that, that would dare to do that. No one else is going to do that. Why? Because you know that king could easily just like get rid of you. But the only person who would say, listen, king, I need you. Can I, can I talk to you right now at three o'clock in the morning and just ask for a simple thing like a glass of water is his child. We have that kind of access to God. You and I have that kind of access to God. So this idea that you may have in your mind that you're not good enough, that you're not qualified enough, that God doesn't want to hear from you, that you've made too many mistakes. All of that is a lie from the pit of hell because God wants to talk to you with this. We have the confidence to draw near to the throne of grace, as Hebrews talks about, that we may receive mercy and help in our time of need. We're going to look at the Lord's Prayer for the next couple of weeks in this series. And I know I'm getting a, taking a long time to get to this point. But if we want to pray better prayers, thankfully, Jesus gives us a tutorial in Matthew chapter six. And he literally says, pray like this. Let's read it in Matthew chapter six, verse nine. Pray then like this. That's what Jesus says. Pray then like this. So if you want to pray, do it this way. Pray then like this. Our father in heaven. 
Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation and deliver us from evil. This is called the Lord's Prayer. It's a powerful template for one for our prayer life, for us to pray good prayers. Sadly, some Christians, they, they just see this as mechanical. Like I've, I've seen this like in football movies and stuff like that, where they're just like all yelling it out in the middle of the football movie, not thinking about what the words actually mean. But all of these words have a powerful meaning to us. And so it's almost like if you ever watched like a kindergarten class, say the, pre, uh, the Pledge of Allegiance, like they don't think about what allegiance, I pledge allegiance. That's a big deal. That's a big deal to say, I pledge my allegiance to something. Like you really need to have like, um, you need to have like a age requirement for that. But we teach it to kindergartners and they just kind of spout it off, not thinking what it means. But if we stop for a second and think about what these words mean to us, it can change the way that we talk to God. So let's just break it down. We're going to start with this first thing that Jesus says, pray like this, our father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Our Father. The first word is our. This reminds me that my prayers are not just about me. The first thing I'm going to say is I'm going to say our. I'm a part of something bigger than me. It's not just about me. When I pray, I do it with you un in unity with other believers. And this reflects in the desires and needs of the people around me. So I'm not praying for somebody else to get struck by lightning. I'm not doing that. Like our means that I want all people that are around me, the people that love me, that are close to me, that go to church with me, all this stuff, and the people who are my enemies. Our Father in heaven. Our Father. So it's not about me. Father is a Greek word, pater, pater, however you would pronounce that word there, which in, uh, when in Aramaic, when Jesus was talking, this is the language that he used. He used the word Abba, not the Swedish disco band, Abba. What that means is father, father. It means daddy. That's kind of the, the, the language that they use. And so where you would just say like Papa or something like that, they, they, this is what they, the, the, the kind of familial language that was used there. And so he's saying our daddy. He, and so it's, it's the, the, the deepest and simplest human relationship. Jesus is telling us that God is loving and accessible. God is loving and accessible. So in the first two words of this prayer, we're reminded that, that our, that it's not about us. And that even though that once we were separated from God, now we are children of God because he gave us his son and Jesus died for us so we can call him daddy and have a loving, accessible and appro approachable relationship with him. So our father in heaven, in heaven balances this intimacy of our relationship with God with his power and his majesty. Because it's, I'm not just going to get familiar with God. How many of you guys have ever made a wise crack to your dad? How many of you guys have ever like said something and your, your dad's like, yeah, you don't talk to me like that. You know, you ever done that where there's that familiarity and you just kind of say things and you get a little too comfortable with the person and you do those things. And so what Jesus is saying is that our father. So you call him daddy. Go ahead and do it in heaven. Don't get too familiar with him because he is above all. He's powerful. He has majesty. Don't let familiarity come into your life and your relationship with him. He is higher and deeper and so much further beyond my, my understanding could ever grasp. In Isaiah chapter 55, verse eight and nine, he says this, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways, declares the Lord. For as high as the heavens are, or for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts higher than your thoughts thoughts. And so he is like above it all, our father in heaven, but we still get to call him father. So we have to make sure that we understand that he's powerful and he's holy and he's just and he's all these things. He's great. He's above everything. He created everything. We have to understand this, but yet we still get to call him father. Hallowed be that name. Our father in heaven, hallowed be that name. Name refers to a person's character and authority. 
All that God stands for should be treated as holy and honored because of his perfection and goodness. God's will that drove creation also does so for his glory. Our father in heaven, hallowed be your name. We understand that our relationship with our heavenly father comes out of the desires of his heart. God wants a relationship with you. God wants a relationship with you. But pastor, you don't know what I've done. That's true. But God knows exactly what you've done. And he's taking care of that price. In communion today, we remember the body of Jesus that was broken for us and his blood that was poured out for us on the cross. Because those are the links that God would go to to have a relationship with you. The death and resurrection of Jesus took away every accusation that the enemy has against you. And it also takes away every reason you may think that God God does not want to talk to you. It takes care of it. God wants to talk to you. The father is waiting for you. The father is always waiting for you. I love it when my kids come and talk to me because there's things that I, as their father, know about them that no one else knows. There's things that I, as their father, can put into their spirit that no one else can. That I love it when my kids come and talk to me. The one, one of my favorite things to do with my girls is I will get them real close and I'll squeeze them tight and I'll say, I love you, I think you're beautiful, and I'm thankful every day that God let me be your dad. I will tell them that because I know I need to put that in their spirit. Years ago, my youngest, uh, she, she, or a couple years back, she climbed up in my lap and she grabbed me by the face. You ever had dads, you ever had a kid do that to you? Grab you by the face and just like make you look at them dead in the eyes? And this is what she said. She goes, Daddy, you have blue eyes like me. And I said, I know, you have my eyes. And because you have my eyes, guess what that makes you? Strong like Daddy. I'm putting things into her spirit. I'm putting things in your spirit and your daddy. God wants to put things in your spirit as you talk to him, as he talks to you. He wants to minister you. He wants to encourage you. He wants to tell you things. He wants to shape who you are as a person. He wants to tell you when you step out of line. He wants to give you the words to say. He wants to guide you through his spirit. He wants to do these things with you. The peace that you need in life, the strength that you need in life, the hope that you need, the joy that you need is all found in the presence of the father. So we need to talk to him. We need to talk to him, but I don't know what to say. Guess what? He knows that too. Just start talking to him. Just start talking to him. Listen, the conversations that I have with my six year old are very different than the conversations I have with my 22 year old. Very different, extremely different. But, but does that mean that I don't want to talk to my six year old? No, I want to talk to her. She's fun. I love talking to my six year old. So wherever you're at, you may think, man, I, I know how to pray. I know what to say to God. I know I know what to, what I need to do. And God, me and God have this really good dynamic relationship between me and him. Or you might be like, man, I feel like if I had to if I had to pray right now in front of everybody, I would literally feel like a toddler. That's OK. Start talking to God. Start communicating with him because your father wants to have a relationship with you. I want all my kids to talk to me on that level, on the level that they are capable of communicating with me at. So as we talk about prayer, there's a couple of things I want you to do. Number one, stop comparing yourself to other people. Stop thinking, well, God wants to hear from them, but he doesn't want to hear from me. No, God wants to hear from you. Otherwise, Jesus would not have come and died for you. Stop comparing yourself to other people. Number two, think about the quantity and the quality of your prayers. If you want to go, if you want to improve the quali quality of your prayers, go back through what Jesus said here. And, and we're going to spend the next few weeks on talking about what Jesus said here. But go back through in Matthew chapter six in your Bible where it says the Lord's Prayer. Go back through and look at how Jesus tells us to pray. That will improve the quality of your prayers. If you need to improve the quantity of your prayers, if you're only talking to God one day a year or one time a week, like it just think about the quality and quantity of your prayers. Next thing, know that it's not about what you've done, but it's about what he's done for you. That's what's qualifying you. So it's not about what you've done. It's not about you earning the right 
for you to be able to talk to God. Jesus has already done that work for you. You are a child and your father wants a relationship with you. Our father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you, that you sent your son Jesus to die for us. To pay the price of our, our sins that you've forgiven us and set us free because you want us to have a relationship with you. Thank you that we can be now called your children and that we can call you daddy. Father, I pray that you would help us improve the quality of our prayers. Lord, that we would learn how to talk to you. That we wouldn't just be ashamed but Lord, we would know that you, you want to talk to us where we are. Because in doing that, you'll get us to where we need to be. And maybe some of us, we got so busy with life. Maybe we get so, so carried away going from work to, to, to kids, to making dinner, to all the things that we have to do, all the, all the things that we have to check off our list of where we just get busy and we forget to have time with you. Father, I pray that you would slow us down and you would speak to us by the power of your spirit. And God, through this communication that we have with you, you would shape us to be in the, into being the person that you want us to be. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. One thing that Jesus says, and we'll end with this today and I'll let you get out of here. One thing that Jesus talks about is he talks about, and we'll talk about this a little later, but give us this day our daily bread. That means we can take our needs to God. And right now, before we leave today, I just want to pray over whatever need it is in your life. Maybe it's a physical need. Maybe it's a financial need. Maybe it's a, a relationship that's broken, that's damaged, that you need God to heal. Whatever it is, God will meet your needs. Your father will meet your needs. So let me pray for you really fast. Heavenly Father, I thank you for every person here. Father, I pray for those in this room who need a miracle financially. Lord, that they have that, that, that bill, that thing coming up. God, I thank you that you promised to provide. That you promised that you told us that we didn't have to worry that we didn't have to be anxious for anything. And so, Father, I pray provision right now in Jesus' name. Father, for those who have relationships that are broken, God, I thank you that you told us that we would have, we have in you because we've been reconciled. We have the ministry of reconciliation. So God, I pray just like you put our, the, our relationship with you back together. I pray that your spirit would begin to put relationships back together in Jesus name. Father, for those of us who are sick in our bodies or who know someone who's sick, God, I pray in Jesus name that you would be our healer. Lord, you said in your word that by your stripes, we are healed. And so Father, we pray in Jesus name for healing right now in this place. God, whatever the need is, Father, we thank you that our source is you. Our source is you. Sometimes you provide a way for us to meet that need in the natural through, through work or going to a doctor or whatever. But Lord, sometimes you provide in the supernatural. And Lord, God, I, I thank you, Lord, that either way it is from you. And so, Father, I pray that you would direct our steps this week. And Lord, that you would provide for us in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen.